Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at JSON objects and how you deal with them in Flutterflow. If you're building any kind of app and you're dealing with APIs or sometimes even with your own database, you are going to come across situations where you need to deal with JSON objects and extract data from them. So I've got three ways here that I'm just going to run through quickly that you can do just that. Uh, I have covered these all before in separate videos, but I've never covered them in one. So here we go. So uh, the first one is if we're using a API call within Flutterflow. So on the left hand side there, that's our menu option. Uh, basically, our response in this instance, I'm calling the OpenAI image generation API there. In our response here, uh, we want to be get the opportunity to map the JSON path. Now I'll get onto how we use that in a second and what that does that actually is the if you like the path to that particular element of the of the json object so within the data object which is a a list of objects then we're after the one called url now if you do a test and you test your api call what you'll get is some recommended options down at the bottom uh, and then you can use those to add a new J JSON path, basically. So you can extract the specific bit of data you want from it by using this format. So if we go to the OpenAI uh, documentation, this is the response format that you get from OpenAI. So you can see it's the JSON. We've got data, which is the list of objects, and we've got URLs. Um, in our instance, we've only got one URL. Um, but also you can put in there the revised prompt because when you send a prompt to OpenAI, it actually adds to it, fluffs it out a bit and makes it more descriptive and that you can get that sent back as well. So you can also access that. So we are looking at basically the JSON object. We're looking at the data element and we are looking for the URL. So that JSON path is the JSON object, the data element, and the URL. So these are pretty handy because we can use them pretty easily within our within our Flutterflow project. So if we go and find a page, there we go. Basically, I've set this up already. So if we've got a button and we make an API call and the API result succeeded, what we're doing then is to that text object we are mapping the data url so therefore if we did the api call we would get the um the image url in that text box so we're simply mapping api result which is our custom action output we've got api result which is our action output for the api call and then we're going JSON body, JSON path, because that's where we're doing it. And that's our JSON path to the element that we want to use. And then that is, you can then use that anyhow you like within your within your app. So that's method one. It's um, it's actually pretty handy if, and it's actually dead simple if you're using uh, the API calls. Now, method two is custom data types. So on the response, you can select a custom data type uh, which you need to have set up obviously and let's go to the data type so we've got a custom data type called OpenAI in this instance we've only got one field and the field name is URL and the data type is image path obviously because it's URL to the image and the important thing here is that the URL field name needs to exactly match the field name that you are trying to sort of extract from the from the JSON object. So there is more complicated versions of that. So let's go to that because then it's an easy way to explain how you would use that information. So I'll go to another project. Okay, so I've done this before in the database search video, but it's I think for people that are specifically looking for JSON stuff, this is um probably worth going over again. So we're doing exactly the same thing here, except we are not using the 
API call within Flutterflow, what we're actually doing is searching our own database. So this is search the database by keyword and what we're doing, we are searching our own table for information relating to job search in this instance and our output is jobs JSON. That's our action output that we are that we are um, retrieving back from our database and that's the JSON object. So if we go to custom code and go to search table, basically we're calling the superbase function that searches our table and returns a JSON response, essentially the raw response from the from the search as a JSON object. And then we have got a custom data type and it's called JSON response. And these are the fields that we're returning from our table in Superbase. So we've got a JSON object and all the objects within that, these are the fields that they're called and they are table column names basically. And the type of data that's in them. So these must match the name of the object within your JSON response, whether that's from an API or from your own table, wherever it's from. These must be exactly the same so it knows to map it to the data type. So um, how we use that particular version. So if we basically start with the grid view. So our grid view value, i.e. the information we are using to create the dynamic children is jobs JSON, which if you remember is the action, that is the action output from our custom action, which is the JSON object of the search returned information from Superbase. And that's what we're using to create the dynamic children within our grid view. And then from there to map the elements, we're mapping job, a jobs list item. So essentially get back to there again, calling the variable jobs list within the grid view with the values of the JSON. So jobs list is what we're looking for. We're mapping it to a data type. We've got a data type called JSON response, which is this one. And we're looking for a data structure field. In this instance, we're looking for the role. So whatever the role is within our response so it might be an engineer whatever it may be that will go in there and the same for all these for instance that would be the salary so we are mapping the json response to the so we're mapping the job list the list within the grid view that we've created from the json response we're mapping it to the data type json response and the structure field we'll pick in this instance is salary so that would then pick the salary out of there and if there's one object within the JSON you're getting from your API or your search, you'll just get the one element here. But obviously, the more you, more you get objects within the list, then your your sort of data grid will populate. That's the second way to do this. Now the third way is done purely in the code. So we back back to the other uh, demo project. Okay, so in this version, we are again calling the OpenAI API and we want an image URL to populate our image object there and it will be the URL of the image that the AI creates. So on our custom actions, we're looking for this one, get image. And we type given, we send in the API prompt, obviously, so we can tell the AI what we need and we send in the user ID. That's not relevant to this. That's some super base backend checks and balances type thing. But importantly, our output variable coming back with is called OpenAI. What we're then doing, we've got an image URL page state, which we are updating with the output of our get image function, which was the output was OpenAI, updating the page state and that's going in there and knock on of that is the image URL is the page state. So we're placing our 
response from uh, OpenAI query into the page today and that's how we display in the image. Now then how we're extracting this information is what's different about this one. So basically we return an image path is our return so we're returning a string not a JSON object as an image path. Apologies if you can hear my fan it's uh, my computer is the fans going off pretty loudly at the moment um, but returning a string as an image path as our response from the from the remote procedure call because what we're doing we are decoding basically decoding the JSON within the code and we are essentially got a variable called URL and out of the response data ie the response which is our response from our API call and we are going into the data element and we want index 0 and we want the URL of index 0 so data element and this is a list of objects and in this instance obviously we've got two objects URL objects that will be index 0 will be that one index 1 will be that one and then so on and so forth they started index 0 so if we wanted the second one for instance if you were creating a second one that there would be index one and so on and so forth but in our instance we're only creating one image so therefore we only need index zero anyway and we are returning that as a string which is the url and we're returning the url as an image path which in turn as i've just described we are adding to the page date and displaying it on the page so there's three ways if you're dealing with JSONs that you can extract the information out of them and use them in your apps those three I use and they're pretty straightforward so there are videos around on the channel where you can actually dive into these where they have been used in different scenarios we've got the search one we've got one specific for the API call as well hopefully that will help you solve what sometimes can be a interesting problem to get over when you start clicking those boxes and everything's grayed out or everything's red and you don't really know what to do next so that's where i get around it hopefully that helps if it does please consider the usual like and subscribe and i will speak to you next time